Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Here we go, part two, second video on section five of chapter ten on how do you find the measures of all seven angles related to circles. Remember on our foldable, here's what we've done so far. Where is the vertex of the question? We've talked about the ones where the vertex is at the center. What were those? That was the angle, that was the central angle. And remember the measure was equal to the measure of the arc. The measure of the angle equal to the arc. Simple as that. And then we went down here on this part of the foldable and said, okay, what about where the vertex is actually on the circle? That was two different types of angles. One angle was the inscribed angle, and the other angle was the tangent chord angle. And remember, the measures of those guys was simply half the measure of its intercepted arc. So central angle was equal to the arc, inscribed and tangent chord angle was half the arc. Well, now we're going to tackle the orange egg, the purple egg, and the blue egg. And we're going to move to the foldable end on the very bottom flat. The very bottom flat. We're going to write this. Where the vertex is outside the circle. So we're moving the vertex from the center. So then we went to on the circle. And now we're going to move it outside the circle. And this video is going to tackle three different angles. Where the vertex is outside the circle. And how you find the measure of those particular angles. So here's what you're going to find out. Or what you're going to see. The measures of or the uh, the names of the angles is one called a tangent tangent angle, a tan tan angle. Another one's called a secant secant angle. And the third one, where the vertex is outside the circle, is called a secant tangent angle. So let's dive into this. So on that part of the foldable, it should be the biggest part of the foldable flappy. So you got more space, and we're going to be drawing three different pictures. One's going to be a tangent tangent angle. One's going to be a secant secant angle, and one's going to be a secant tangent angle. And I'm going to give you the definitions and how you find the measure of these three angles. So let's do it. Open up that foldable and let's get drawing some pictures. So here's the first one called a secant secant angle. I don't know why the symbol's not there, but a secant secant angle. Here's your definition of what it is. You can see the picture, but a definition of what a secant secant angle is, it is this. It's where the vertex is outside the circle. So you guys can see that right there is the vertex. It's outside the circle. And its sides are made up of two secant segments. So DB is a secant segment, and FB is a secant segment. But the question is this. How do you find the measure of that secant secant angle? Well, let's do this. Let me erase this. So let's say we have the following. And I'd write this exact example in your notes or in your foldable flappy. you got this one arc over here, CE, is 40 degrees. Lovely. And you got the other arc way over here, DF, is 100 degrees. Again, the question is this. What is the measure of the secant secant angle, DBF? What's the measure of that angle right there? Well, listen, as a recap, if this was a central angle right there, well, then we know the measure of the central angle is the same exact as this, so that would be 40. So I wonder, is this angle 40? Hmm, I wonder if it's the same. You'll see here shortly. Or, 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 maybe this is the case. If I drew, let me erase this. If I drew, again, back to this, if this over here is 100, watch this. And I drew this in, well, <laughs> this inscribed angle right there to right there, what's the measure of that inscribed angle? Well, it's 50. I wonder if maybe you can apply, well, that doesn't make any sense if you think about this. This angle has to be less than that, knowing that this one's 50. This one's getting more stretched out to over here, so this angle has to be less than 50. So all this logic is nice. And you could kind of speculate what it might be, but let me give you the answer. So this arc is 40. This arc over here is 100. The measure of the angle is, drum roll please, Bing! here it is. The answer is 30. What? How do you get 30 from this arc being 40 and this arc over here being 100? That's a phenomenal question. Notice this. You take half of 40, that gives you 20. That's not 30. You take half of 100, that gives you 50. That's not that. Hmm. What is the deal? Oh, check this out. What if I take 100, subtract away 40, so I take the difference of the two arcs. And then once I take the difference of the two arcs, which by the way is 60, ooh, how do I get from 60 to 30? I would do this. I would take this times 1 half. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a quinky dink that that's the answer. And that's how you do it. That's exactly it. You take one half 
the difference, up here is the actual formula, one half the difference of the two arcs. So I would absolutely circle, highlight, do what you need to do, but here is the exact, I guess, theorem. It's not a theorem, but definition. The exact how you find the measure of the angle. You take the measure, well, the measure of the secant secant angle is half the difference. That's it. That's why it's underlined. Half the difference of what? The two intercepted arcs. And it happens that way every single time you have a secant secant angle. It's half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So this is the one arc that it cuts off. This is the other arc. So take half the difference, subtract them, and take half of it. Does that really work all the time? Well, watch. I'll move this. I don't know. We'll move this really close. So I'll make this. Um, here, I'll make it 10. Wow. I'll make it 10 and 100. Well, half the difference, I would take the difference of those two arcs. That would give me 90. Half and 90 is 45. Weird. If I stretch this really far out like this, way far out like that, I don't even know if I can make this. Here, I'll make it really, really skinny. Wow. So there we go. So watch this. This little arc right there is 10. That arc way over here is 16. If I take the difference of those, that's 6. Half of 6 is 3. There's your answer. That's the measure of this angle way out there. So that is exactly how you do it every single time. You take half the difference of the two arcs. That's pretty cool. So let's move on now to the tangent tangent angle. Okay, what I'd also write in the same foldable, uh, or in the same flap, sorry, is a tangent tangent angle looks like this. You got a circle, and you got these two tangents. The definition of a tangent tangent is this the vertex, again, the vertex is outside the circle, just like the secant secant you just learned. And these two things are tangents, and it's made up of two tangent segments. So, the question is, how do you find the measure of that angle? Well, what if I give you some arcs, just like we did before, with the last, the secant secant? So let's say that this whole arc over here is 220, and this arc right here, the middle one, the little minor arc, is 140. So the major arc way over here to the right is 220. This one's 140. The question is, what is the measure of the tangent tangent angle? Well, hmm, I wonder if it's 70. I wonder if you take half of this. Maybe that's what you do. Or maybe it's the same. Maybe it's 140. That doesn't look like a 140 degree angle, that's for sure. It looks like an acute angle. Or maybe I take half of this. Hmm. Or, since the vertex is outside the circle, just like the secant secant was, I wonder if the same thing applies where you take half the difference of the arcs. Well, if I applied that principle, that idea, that theorem, that whatever, postulate, whatever you want to call it, formula, that's really what it is. If you applied that formula, 220, subtract that away from 140. got to make sure to do it in the right order. You don't want negatives. So you do the bigger one minus the smaller one. What does that give me? Well, that gives me 80. And then if I take half of 80, that gives me 40. So let's go see if we get 40 for the answer for this. That would be kind of cool. So here we go. Oh, my, looky there. You get, oh, this is amazing. You get 40. So it's half the difference. So, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to write this down a second time. You already have it. That's the same exact principle, same exact formula that you use to find the tangent tangent angle and the secant secant angle. Same exact thing. Just take half the difference of the two arcs. Let me show you one simple example. I'm going to make this one yiksa. Let's make it, there we go. Why not that? So if I take 275, that big arc, and I subtract away 85. So 275 and 85, which is 190. Take half of 190, uh, that gives you 95. Half the difference of this little, whoops, half the difference of this arc and this big arc right there. Wow, that's pretty cool. So you take half the difference <laughs> of those two arcs. So, secant secant, you do half the difference. Tangent tangent, you do half the difference. I wonder, I just wonder what's going to happen with the secant tangent angle, where again, the vertex is outside the circle. I don't know. Let's go check it out. Let's go. So into your foldable, flappy, secant tangent angle looks like this. Circle, of course. You got yourself, well, here I'll just put the definition up here. The vertex, ooh, again, the vertex is outside the circle. Vertex is right there. And it's made up of, the sides of this angle are made up of a secant segment, that's EC, and a tangent segment, that's CD. So you got a secant tangent angle. 
Well, here we go. Let's say the measure of the little arc right here happens to be 60. And the measure of this arc over here happens to be 160. And the question is, what's the measure of the secant tangent angle right here? You guessed it. It's exactly right. You take half the difference. <laughs> same rule applies. Same formula. You take half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So if you do that, that's going to give you 100. Half of 100 is going to give you 50. Let's see if that actually is what we get. So I click this. Bam, it's 50. And yes, I can move this anywhere I want to. You get the idea. That is exactly how you do it. Once again, you don't need to write this. You already have it written on this part of the foldable flappy, which is amazing. Because all three of those, I don't care which one it is, but if the vertex is outside of the circle, then you take one half the difference of the arcs. I'm excited to practice these in class with you. We'll talk to you later. See ya.